If you're still not getting it, if you have some questions, please type in a question. Please type a question mark in there. It's like, I could not do this on my own. Or type all okay. I like that too. Just give me a status. Where are you? Do you understand it? Do you see these? Are your eyes working? Has you gotten your brain out of the way? I just I, I don't want to lose anybody here because I'm just I'm about ready to get into just a few more concepts, and this is where it gets kind of interesting. It'll get a little dicey. Okay. So I am now looking for. This equation, uh, what's the equation for this meta pattern? I'll help. I'll put it back into 3D. That might help. Some of you guys remember how you'd express that first number. And I'd love to call on people, but I just can't I'll bring myself to do that. Y equals 5x squared. Do you see it? Has everybody seen this? You see the five squares? It's, it's a repeating pattern. It's a meta pattern. That means if I went to base 13, it'd be, it'd be 5 of the 13 squares plus 2. And I just keep going on. That's right. The subquant, we just say SQ. Cool math. You're getting into lingo now. The math is just uh, interesting. Okay, let's do a different one. Anytime you introduce negatives, that always confuses kids. Now, I don't know if it's because of the number or, you know, what, what causes it. But our belief is it's the premature introduction of symbols. Because when we do it this way, we don't have anybody that has any trouble seeing this. We first say, what's a subquan meta pattern? What do you see in each one of these? And we ask them to type it in. What do you see? And remember, magenta is a negative. Because they're all magenta, you can just say one negative. So it's negative 264. David, yeah, we, we actually separate the subquans by commas, but we only do that when they change signs. Otherwise, We'll just put a negative in front of it. And so cherry on yours, I can put up cherries. If everybody looks down to, to cherries, uh, I think she put five there for the last one anyway. Let me put in cherry's answer and compare it to what you see on the board. Okay, so I'm going to type in what cherry typed in just to, because it's a great learning opportunity. Here's what Cherry had typed in for Cherry. So if you scroll back and look at Cherry's, everybody looks at Cherry's. Okay, at 943, you see she put in negative 2, comma 6, comma 5. That is something we would put in. But look at this meta pattern. See how this is different from a negative 2, 6, 5? This is negative 2, comma 6, comma 5. The difference is, those last two numbers don't have a negative sign in front of them, and because they're commas, it separated them out. And so the sign does stay. And that's a fundamental concept that I have to say. All the way through, I think uh, Alexis can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's like all the way through math up into the seventh grade. We're teaching kids about subtraction. And then when we start introducing them into algebra, all of a sudden we say, well, there's really no subtraction. It's, everything can be expressed as addition of just negative terms. And then all of a sudden you just cause all sorts of problems. But as we see here, the color is stuck to the number, and you can't really pull that negative off of the color. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, someone can make the case that you can negate something or something. But right now at the beginning when you're trying to start out with kids and do instructional, you want to keep 
things really pure and simple so that they can always go back to it and you don't change the rules on them. Now here our rules are based, if you were in the first class, you're finding out we're learning how to subitize. Oh, I'm sorry, I should serve everybody some sushi here. Let me put every, some sushi here. There. There you go. Everybody's got some sushi now. Um, when we were subitizing these sushi dishes, and we were looking at them to see how many were in the green dish, like three. You can instantly see it. So as, as kids were learning these numbers, you want to keep it consistent so you never have to go back and say, oh, well, we're changing the rule now. It's one of the things that make people not like math when you change the rules. And so by type, uh, tying into the, the part of the brain that does this, we don't, have to, we don't have to change the rules. Let's go on, and I'm going to give you some challenging equations, not for you math literate people, but for you people that have been weak at algebra. I want you to see how easy this would jump out to you. And then picture yourself if you had had back in third grade or second grade, if somebody had presented it in first grade, maybe, like this. Okay, so we've already had the lesson that we've had. And now we're going to try to determine what this equation is. And we would go through and we would ask them first to subquant it. And now you would use the commas because we have mixed colors. So does somebody want to put the subquant out? Cooper, Cherry had a really good question here. I want to kind of chime in because it's going along with what you're saying. Um, how do kids visualize the negatives as a quantity when you mix positives and negatives? How does that visualization ah, work? There's that hang up on quantity again. What you want them to do is visualize it first as a number, as, a, as what it is, the subquant that it is. And I mean, that's what it really is. When you want to then determine what is the net of these, and and what we what we actually start out is when you when you teach combining, and I'm not doing that section right here, but if we had taught combining, you would have seen four magenta unit cubes and five green cubes, and as you saw them merge, you would see that the green and magenta, whenever they touch, disappear, and you'd end up with one. It's a very simple process to get kids to all of a sudden see the answer, not memorize what they are. They just can see if they have nine magenta cubes and they have six green cubes and they put them together, they can see they're going to have six magenta or three magenta ones left over. Because you can see it. You can see what happens. You can see the two kind of merging. You can kind of overlap them. And they're not in these digits. They haven't been symbolized. They're still real. And so as you start out with uh, colors like that, Sherry, they get that just essential uh, knowledge of combining. And that's what we actually call it. Whether, whether you put two green cubes and three green cubes together, it doesn't take a child long to see. As you start moving them closer to closer, they just shout out five. Because their eye all of a sudden sees that, that organization of five. And when they see five magenta and four magenta coming together, they see the nine magenta. They don't, they don't have any trouble. That negative connotation. So we, when we recommend teaching integers, at the very beginning, we don't recommend going to whole numbers or natural numbers. We start right out with integers. Because that's the way real life is. You know, we, we are naming everything. Oh, wait, there's five horses. Those are three buckets. Those are, we have that extra word that goes after, that extra description. And so when we start tossing in the color, they start thinking, oh, yeah, I have five magenta cubes. I have three green cubes. That adjective just starts sticking into it. And that's the way the brain works. So we're not trying to come up with another way to teach you the brain. What we're trying to do is show you the way that the brain thinks. This is this is a way that the brain actually sees it. And uh, we can base this off of a lot of uh, neuropsychological fMRIs and stuff that they've really narrowed down what this is. And had you been in the very first 
session, uh, you would have heard Uta talk about how different mammals and stuff have been tested and three week old babies can see this. And uh, there's a lot of research. Okay, so did I ever get this equation? I know that we went to the question. Can somebody just drop the equation for this in again? Or the subquan, first the subquan. Somebody can drop in the subquan, use the symbols. We're old, we're adults, we can use symbols. Um, but I, I would have a preschooler, I'd have a four-year-old just tell me what they see. I see five squares, two segs, and four ones. That's what they'd say. And now the equation should come right out of this. 5x squared minus 2x plus 4. I don't know if everybody's totally aware of this, but numbers are the built-in mechanism for animals to predict the future. When you have two cookies and you go get three more, you can predict that you will then have five cookies. When we do equations like this, we can predict. So I can now use that equation that was put in by Uta and Izzy, and I could sit there and say, what would it be if X was 10? We could predict five times 10 squares minus two tens plus four. So I can predict. Is everyone seeing this? Please let me know. I need the feedback here. Is everybody seeing that you can see the algebraic equation? Because I would like to do just the fun. I want to bring in one more base sheet, and I want to bring in, where did I put that silly base sheet? And uh, because I was told that I'm running out of time, and I just want to stick that. If you delete it, it goes into your trash, right? I'll go into my trash, and I will grab that sheet right there. That big sheet. Oh, I don't see it. I heard that little resin. There it is. Oh, that's a big sheet. Okay. Give it a second to res. Give it lots of seconds. This is a very big sheet. I just want you to see, you guys, I think, everybody in here could do this. You're gonna rep, you are going to recognize a cubic equation if what you're seeing was a meta pattern. If, you, if this was repeated in a lot of bases so you could see that it was a meta pattern, what would that meta pattern be? And I close that window, and now I'm going to close that. Oops, got my editor open. Hold on. As the sheet res for everybody, this is a this is our biggest sheet. This is why I came into Second Life. This is why you can't do this in real life. I cannot pull out nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine cubes and give them to kids of any age and expect them to have something done. So here we go, the big finale test. Can you tell me what this cubic equation is? If this was the meta pattern. And to help people, this first one, I'm gonna put it in 3D so you get your exponents correct. Go ahead, this should be a quick one for you math teachers, but you non-math people, just watching. Think about subquan first. What are you looking at from a subquan point of view? Somebody could type it in if they wish, as soon as it reses for you. If somebody will type in the subquan, and you'll see how it just goes right into the equation. There's not a lot of thinking involved here. Am I getting the subquan? Can everybody see it? Ah, she 